the months that are considered allergy season um, are typically uh, those months around spring and fall because that's when we see kind of surges in pollen. So for spring, it's typically mid-March uh, until June. And then for fall, it can be anywhere in mid to late August until the first frost occurs of the year. But we've been seeing a steady change over the last few years because with climate change, we've been seeing warmer temperatures in general. So pollen seasons have been starting earlier and earlier. So we've been seeing people even as early early as February and March this year, um, which is almost a full month earlier than we usually do. And the pollen season can go longer, um, you know, into June and sometimes even into July. And not only are the pollen seasons longer, but we've been seeing that the pollen counts are much higher because with climate change, there are increased levels of carbon dioxide in the air. And as a result, you know, plants feed off of that. So now we have super pollinator plants (laughs) making more pollen for longer periods of the year. And the same uh, goes for the fall season. This past winter was very warm, right? So that first frost came, but then again, it got really warm again and kept going back and forth. So that pollen season uh, in both spring and fall is getting longer and longer. In addition to, you know, longer seasons and stronger pollen seasons, now certain areas of the country are having bad allergy seasons that typically did not. So, for example, um, the Southwest uh, was generally considered safe, but now they have very severe allergy seasons because they've had uh, more rain, more humidity than before. And other areas of the country, too, um, certain cities like Buffalo and upstate New York um, that typically don't have bad allergy seasons in the last decade have been some of the worst allergy cities in the country as a result of the climate change. And then the other flip side of it too is um, outside of the carbon dioxide levels rising, uh, if there's increased ozone, especially in cities or increased uh, air pollution, that makes allergies and asthma worse as well. So it's a, a multitude of factors. So the main allergens that people are affected by in the spring um, are tree pollen, which comes into the air, you know, again, in March, April, May, as well as grass pollen, which starts a little later in the spring, usually in early May and can go on until June. But if you're somebody who has underlying allergies year round uh, to things like dust mites, mold, animal dander, this can further exacerbate that. You know, those allergens are, of course, still there. But then fall is the other big allergy season because of ragweed pollen. That is the main culprit that comes into the air in late August, September, October uh, that causes a lot of uh, the same symptoms. Medications that are most helpful for allergies um, tend to be the newer uh, 24-hour antihistamines. So some examples of that are Zyrtec, Claritin, Allegra, Zizol, These actually work much better than the older type of antihistamines like Benadryl because one, they last for 24 hours and Benadryl wears off after six hours and they have far less side effects uh, than Benadryl that can make you very, very drowsy and sedated. Um, Other great medications for seasonal allergies are nasal steroid sprays. So some examples of that are Flonase, Nasacort, and now there's antihistamine nasal sprays available over the counter like Azelastine or Aspirin as well as antihistamine eye drops. And the nice thing about these nasal sprays and eye drops are they're very effective and they have even less side effects than a lot of the pills. So even if any of the other tablets make you drowsy, these typically don't because they're topical medications that don't really go into your body. But the things that I always like to warn about because they're over the counter but not safe for allergies are decongestant. So there's a nasal spray called Afrin or oxymetazoline that is actually very, bad for allergies because it actually makes your allergies worse in the long run because it causes like a rebound effect. Um, So temporarily you feel good and then your allergies come back much worse. And then also uh, decongestants like Sudafed or pseudoephedrine, that's also not good to take long term. Both of these decongestants not only make allergies worse, but they have bad side effects like they raise your blood pressure, your heart rate, and they can be habit forming. And it's sneaky because sometimes they're even in your typical allergy medicine. So be careful with anything that says D on it for using that for too long. So for example, plain Zyrtec you can use every day uh, without worry, but Zyrtec D, you should really limit it to no more than a week max.
the best course of action for allergies is to be proactive and start your medications before your symptoms start or right at the start of symptoms. So generally, I like to tell my patients if they suffer in the springtime, they really need to be starting all of their preventative or controller medications in March. And this is especially important if you also suffer from allergic asthma. So many people don't realize that asthma and allergies actually go hand in hand. So this time of year, we see a, a rise in asthma attacks, ER visits, office visits, hospitalizations, and asthma can be life-threatening. Um, the most common cause are things like pollen and dust mite and allergens. So if you're somebody that suffers from asthma, like coughing, wheezing, chest tightness, shortness of breath, don't treat that with over-the-counter medications alone. That means you need to see a physician and get on a, a appropriate preventative controller medicine. Some non-medication uh, tips that help with allergies are you can make your home an allergy-proof environment. So we recommend keeping your windows closed at night and early morning when pollen counts are highest and it can come into your home. When you come home from being outdoors, change your clothes. And it's also a good idea to shower and wash your hair because it washes all the pollen off of you. Otherwise, you're going to continue to be irritated by that pollen that's on your clothes, hair, and skin. Um, and other things that we recommend, um, believe it or not, everybody is sick of wearing masks, but they are very effective against pollen when you're outdoors. And some of my patients still opt for masks uh, outdoors during allergy season because it really helps with their symptoms because it creates a barrier between you and the pollen. And the same goes for sunglasses and hats, um, anything that you could do to reduce that exposure. Um, some of the myths that I've heard are that honey actually can cure seasonal allergies or can somehow uh, improve your immunity or desensitize you, but that's actually not the case uh, because honey actually doesn't contain any of the pollens or, that are uh, causing the spring allergies like tree pollen and grass pollen, but honey can have a soothing effect. So sometimes people feel better because it helps their sore throat or their cough from the allergies and it's fine to take it that way, but it won't actually treat or cure anything. I always just like to again stress that um, you know, not allergies aren't always mild. Uh, so the asthma component of it uh, is a big factor that people don't realize are linked to seasonal allergies. And uh, per the CDC, we still have 11 deaths a day in this country from asthma. So, you know, if your allergies are very bad, you know, you should see a specialist because they can progress and become more severe. The other thing people don't realize is that allergies, the seasonal allergies can cause rashes. And we've been seeing a lot of that this year. So you can actually break out in full body hives or eczema from high pollen counts. And often people think they're having an allergic reaction to a food or medication or something else. But um, a lot of, most of the time it's to the pollen, especially if it's happening this time of year and nothing else is different. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you all enjoyed this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel for other great content created by me and the Katie Kirk media team.